the character of this bike is very very predictable so come on tell me one thing if the bike has a top speed of 160 kilometers per hour on papers how long do you think you can sustain that speed well, day one day two day three this will bring a smile on your face from day four onwards I am speed 400 powered by SMK helmets. Good morning, everybody. Happy Dashara May. Ma Durga bless you all. We are riding the cheapest Triumph, or I should say the most affordable Triumph motorcycle that you can buy uh, as of today across anywhere in the globe. I mean, wherever this is available for sale. This is the Triumph Speed 400. The launch of this product you know created so much of chaos it just stirred the entire motorcycle industry in india primarily because of two reasons first thing is the price that was a shocker you know nobody was expecting this bike to be launched at like 2 lakh 33 thousand x showroom 2 lakh 98 thousand on road in bangalore the speed 400 so that was the first reason second reason was the build quality oh it's so good you would find me saying it again and again during the course of this video that this bike is built so beautifully it doesn't feel like a small motorcycle at all i mean from the build perspective not from uh, the appearance appearance wise yeah it's it's quite small it i mean i believe uh, hero extreme 160r or maybe your apache rtr 200 they look bigger than this honestly even the yamaha fz 16 whatever that is fz sfi that looks much bigger than the speed 400 so you get this beautiful design plus i mean it looks triumph it looks every bit triumph from any angle you look at it the headlight cluster is so beautiful the golden upside down suspension on the front is incredibly designed even the headlight bracket the attention to detailing on that is of next level the engine it feels and it looks every bit of a triumph the swing arm is a piece of art again made of cast aluminum alloy looks incredibly beautiful well, the switch gear plastics is like of very high quality something that you do not expect in motorcycles which are priced like below three lakh rupees on road now let's come to the engine so the bottom end is amazing it's quite responsive it picks up speed in absolutely no time at all But as you start going towards 8000 rpm or let's say a little above that when you are trying to be you know at like triple digit speeds above 120 kilometers per hour or so that's when you start to feel mild buzz the engine response is so amazing on this thing it it responds really quick there is a very good surge of power at the lower rpms that's where you exactly need the power to be when you are in the city so Triumph claims this makes a peak power of 40 bhp now in city traffic i cannot really extract that entire 40 bhp i don't think i can hit that but based on my riding experience whatever power the way the power is being delivered by this engine whatever the number is it's quite usable come on tell me one thing if the bike has a top speed of 160 kilometers per hour on papers how long do you think you can sustain that speed or how frequently are you going to be hitting that speed right the seat is very nice cushion and i'm like bouncing on the seat the suspension is amazing i i was anticipating that this bike would have a slightly stiffer suspension because again this is the way the engine is designed right the engine and chassis it's designed for like really hard riding but then the suspension is nice and soft it's not wallowy it's not something that will make you go nervous when you are trying to attack corners or when you are trying to execute quick directional changes it will not upset you it will not upset the motorcycle but then it's nice and compliant over all these you can barely feel anything at all the only issue that i'm seeing right now is with the gear shifts i mean it's it's a little bit clunky i mean especially the upshift downshift is still okay 
but the you know off shifts is like very clunky i don't know why is it feeling so clunky is it this only piece or is it like across the board i wish this was a scrambler i would have loved to jump the speed breaker <laughs> on a scrambler great work triumph guys triumph and bajaj no wonder why you have you know shaken up the entire automotive industry here all right now comes the point of the cost and is it a value for money bike should you consider it um Two lakh thirty-three thousand rupees ex showroom and on-road cost of two lakh ninety-seven thousand almost uh, on-road in Bangalore. That's incredible value for money considering how beautifully this bike is designed, how amazing the total build quality is, and uh, how responsive the engine is. But then the problem with this motorcycle is that it does not have that mechanical feel that you would associate with a four hundred cc single-cylinder bike. Take an example of you visiting a restaurant and you order a dish. You know, it looks beautiful. It's hot. It tastes bland. You know, or let's say it is served cold on the table. That's what the problem with this motorcycle is. It's the nature or you know the character of this bike is very very predictable. You take it. You own the motorcycle. Day one, day two, day three. This will bring a smile on your face from day four onwards. you would not enjoy it as much and that feeling of getting connected with the motorcycle that feeling of having a characterful motor that will eventually fade away as time passes by let's consider the honda cb300r as of today i believe it is 2 lakh 45000 rupees it's like 12000 more than this it makes significantly lesser power significantly lesser torque but then it weighs a lot lighter as well so when you ride the cb300r each time you open the throttle it the way that engine responds and the way the bike pulls because of the light weight you feel connected to the motorcycle this thing does not have it it's it gets very boring i i mean to my taste i mean you find the character in even in extreme 160r or let's say uh honda hornet or whatever this bike lacks it that's the main problem but does that make it a bad bike no absolutely not if you have been commuting on let's say a scooter or a 100 150cc motorcycle and you are on a tighter budget should you consider this definitely yes this has lots of advantages apart from having this fabulous build quality and top notch uh, fit and finish This bike also has an advantage of getting serviced once in 16000 kilometers that's a lot of distance you know like one service in a year so that comes with some peace of mind at the same time but in case if you were in you have been riding a 250 cc motorcycle as such let's say a duke 250 or a dominar or a jixer 250 whatever should you upgrade from that no not at all i mean you will get bored out of this predictable nature of the engine in absolutely no time a week or maybe 10 days at the max that you will enjoy and then you will not right so that is the only concern no i don't want anybody to get pissed off by this this is my thought the way i look at this bike the way i felt it may be different than what you feel but then i would say at least book your test ride visit the dealership ride this motorcycle and before you finalize it try riding the cb300r try riding maybe the apache rtr 310 as well if you like it and then make a decision and yeah that is all that i would want to say i hope that this video comes out to be some help in case if it does don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and acquaintances i'll see you guys again in another video until then stay safe ride safe and god bless you all bye, -bye.